Jean, his second win of the year. It's now two apiece for Bottas and Hamilton, and it is four. Repeat, four. One and two and finishes for Mercedes. A team that in pre-season testing was struggling. We were all amazed on the last day of testing that it was Ferrari who were fastest, but oh no, they were hiding something, and they win all four of the races before we return to mainland Europe. So Mercedes make it four races out of four for one and two, setting a new record that has stood since 1992 when Nigel Mansell and Ricardo Patrese was dominant in the only three races with a one-two in the Williams FW14B. Mercedes are on a roll in a season where we expected Ferrari to come up on top. The opening four races have been dominated by just two men, Lewis Hamilton and the race winner of Azerbaijan, Valtteri Bottas. So after race 1000 at the Chinese Grand Prix, we move on to Azerbaijan and Baku, a city that's only been on the calendar since 2016, but in 2017 and 2018 provided the races of the year. And we come here with Lewis Hamilton winning two races on the bounce in Bahrain and China. He leads on 68 points. Valtteri Bottas is second on 62. Max Verstappen third on 39. And he splits up as well with the two Ferraris because it's 4-5 for Vettel and Leclerc. 37 for Vettel, 36 for Leclerc. Gasly, P6 as well on 13 points. Raikkonen seventh on the Alfa Romeo with 12th. Eight points for eighth place Lando Norris. Eight as well for Magnussen. Six apiece for Hulkenberg and Ricardo. So there, after two DNFs as well, each they're still in the battle. And then we get Perez in 12th on three. Stroll 14th on two. And the last driver with points, Tony Kvyat, scored back in Australia as well. In the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes lead the way with 130 points after taking one twos in all the opening races in Australia, Bahrain and China. 44 points in Australia, because Bottas has got the fastest lap. 43 apiece in Bahrain and China. Ferrari, on the other hand, well, they're in the mid-20s. 22 in Australia, 26 in Bahrain, 25 in China. Aston Martin, Red Bull, a third on 52. Renault, fourth on 12. They're joint with Alfa Romeo. Great job from them. They're beating Rich Energy Haas F1 on six. In sixth place on eight points. They're tied with McLaren. And then we get Racing Point Force India. I did it again, the Racing Point F1 team in 8th place and 7. Red Bull Toro Rosso Honda have only got 4 points on the board and no points currently on the board either for Rocket Williams. And it's round 4 of the 2019 season. We've made our piece in Australia, Bahrain and China. This is the last stop before the European season begins. Two weeks time at the Spanish Grand Prix. Then we get Monaco, Northern America next with Canada, then France, Austria and the British Grand Prix in early July as well as the halfway point of the season. Then we get the German Grand Prix, the Hungarian Grand Prix, the summer break, then Belgium and Italy in the last two European seat races of the year. Then we get Singapore, Russia, Japan, then kicking off the Americas we get Mexico and then USA, Brazil and the season rounds out in Abu Dhabi. Hello everybody and welcome to the Grand Review, episode number 4 for race 4 of 2019, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And what a race it was in terms of history for Mercedes making 4 one twos in a row, a brand new history record for them. But otherwise, it was a pretty dull race and you can see why actually going forward. There wasn't that many safety cars, only one virtual, everyone was pretty much well behaved all around the circuit. Danny Ricardo, forgetting to use his mirrors, was the only bit of excitement in the Grand Prix. But it all started pretty eventfully on Friday with Free Practice 1. Now, we'll get into it, because Free Practice 1 was actually cancelled. Now, what happened was, uh, just five minutes into the session, the Williams of George Russell left the pit lane, did an outlap, and on his first flying lap, ran over an open drain cover, and that shredded the underside of the floor of that Williams. 
Now, the drain cover ha was put back down, but it needed to be welded back in place. But they had to check every other drain cover on the circuit. That was 350 drain covers they had to check to make sure they were all safe. Because if one can fail, all the others could fail. So, free practice one was cancelled after just five minutes. However, another funny thing happened when they brought George Russell's car back into the pit lane, the, the tow truck that was bringing it back on the low loader the crane was left up and it hit the underside of the bridge, breaking the crane and dropping the hydraulic fluid onto the Williams below. So a real comical of errors. Everyone saying, well done, Baku, in the opener. So the first actual full session we got was free practice two. And here's what happened on Friday afternoon. And we'll go straight into the free practice two report. And what a free practice two it was. Because Ferrari, well clear in Baku, as Lee Claire heads Sebastian Vettel. Ferrari won two, as in free practice one, but this time on actual pace. Charles Leclerc, I'm sorry for knocking the camera there. So let's get into, the, let's get in then to the free practice two report. Charles Leclerc was the fastest driver to teammate Sebastian Vettel. Ferrari stamped their authority early on. Uh, Charles Leclerc heading teammate by just 0.3 seconds. That's three whole tenths that Leclerc has got to Vettel. That is absolutely fantastic. And it was nearly seven tenths to the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton in third. Look, Ferrari pulling out all of the stops here in Baku. With the loose drain cover having limited running in FP1 to just 12 minutes, teams decided to make it out early for free practice two as well. Uh, as well, there was seven tenths, actually 0.669 uh, to the nearest Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. So he finished in the session third, fourth for Max Verstappen, fifth for Valtteri Bottas. With just 15 minutes, however, of the session gone, Lance Stroll in the racing point brought out the... First red flag of free practice two, but the second red flag of the day. Now, going down towards the braking zone for turn two, it's another uh, left-hander. So you drop down from, uh, from about eighth gear down to third gear. However, on turning, the car turned in, but then the rear's locked and spat him in the opposite direction. He tried to correct, but by doing so, turned into the barrier at the, on the runoff area at turn two broke off the front suspension and caused the red flag. So not a great one for him. As well, uh, Racing Point were able to carry out repairs to the car in time to get him back out for the last five minutes of the session. Uh, the 2017 Baku podium finisher ended up down in P18, though, in the session. It's a bad day for him as well. Then there was another red flag, the second of FP2, but the third red flag of the day was flown for birthday. Uh, boy, Danny Kvyat, 25 years old today, the Toro Rosso driver and father-to-be. He got it wrong coming out of turn seven. Uh, he used the exit of turn seven, locked up, hit the wall as well, slid the rear, hit the wall, front, off came the front suspension, broke the rear as well, punches all around. Uh, as well, destroying his Toro Rosso left front suspension. Having suffered issues with his power steering earlier on in the session, Kvyat at least used his mere nine laps to get good effect, finishing a stroke P6 with the Russian and McLaren with uh, with the Russian. Uh, the McLaren of Carlos Sainz was seventh, and the second Toro Rosso of Alexander Albon was eighth. Second Red Bull of Pierre Gasly P9, all separated by just 0.063 seconds. There was plenty more drama, however as well in the other half of the field. Overshooting corners throughout the session, uh, the dusty Baku circuit, Lewis Hamilton, Roman Grosjean, Valtteri Bottas and Sebastian Vettel all uh, had uh, big moments, while a big lockup for Daniel Ricciardo going into turn 15 caused the Renault driver's brakes to catch fire as well. The resulting flat spot on the Australian's tyres, meanwhile, meant that Ricciardo was unable to head back out onto the track, costing him the last 40 minutes of the session. And it was all capped off. A disappointing session for Renault as well, with Ricardo and Huckerberg riding up P15 and P17, respectively, as well. As well, a frustrating one for the works team, given that McLaren uh, in their Renaults were 7th and 10th. A lot of good day as well. Well, Mickey Pizza uh, was the sole uh, Williams representative of FP2, Russell being out with the car not being able to be homologated. 
Uh, but uh, he was P19, 5.239 seconds off the ultimate pace. Good start, then, in Baku for Friday. Lots of drama. No Friday. Practice one running. Practice two, though, gave us everything we needed to know. It's going to be a cracker. Let's take a look at then at the complete times for free. Practice two. So the only meaningful session on Friday in Baku. Charlotte Claire is top on a 142.872. Sebastian Vettel second at 143.196. Followed by Lewis Hamilton on a 143.541. Max Verstappen on a 143.793. Followed by Valtteri Bottas in fifth, 144.003. Danny Kvyat sixth at 144.177. Carlos Sainz seventh at 144.183. Alexander Albon eighth at 144.216. Pierre Gasly ninth. 144.240. However, we have since learned that he missed the weight bridge and is now required to start the race from the pit lane. So qualifying for him tomorrow is a bit irrelevant. Tenth place for Lando Norris at 144.295. Kevin Magnussen 11th at 144.901. 145.366 for Tenno Giovinazzi. Then we get Sergio Perez at 145.436. Kimi Raikkonen at 145.482. Danny Ricciardo on a 145.483. Romain Grosjean 16th on a 145.618. 17th Nico Hulkenberg on a 146.717. 18th for Lance Stroll on a 147.875. And Robert Kubica 19th on a 148.111. No George Russell. Contact an FP1 in the train cover. means you can't take part until at least FP3. So Ferrari on top again, just like in FP1, because it was Leclerc and Vettel in that cancelled session, but they proved that they have got the dominance with topping FP2, Leclerc ahead of Vettel. Free practicing on Saturday morning was a bit interesting for me as well. I wasn't commentating. We were at the Paris e Prix, so Megan took over that session, but I still kept an eye on and did the report on our YouTube show. So here's what happened in free practice 3 for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So let's get on to the free practice three report then for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It was Leclerc and Ferrari who extended their Baku advantage, but it was Lewis Hamilton predicted on Friday that Mercedes closing the gap to Ferrari uh, overnight would be tough. He was 100% right, as it turned out. Over the 60-minute session in the final one of Azerbaijan, after everyone lost 90 minutes at the beginning of the weekend, so they've only had two, and uh, they've only had three and a half hours of practice out of the four and a half. It is uh, Ferrari, clearly the dominance. Uh, Charles Leclerc fastest to 141.604. Teammate Sebastian Vettel second, two, less than two tenths off the pace. Then, Verstappen was third, uh, 1.2 seconds off the pace, 1.4 seconds off the pace was Bottas, 1.5 seconds off the pace was Hamilton, so Mercedes fourth and fifth with a Ferrari 1-2 and the Honda-powered Red Bull in third, looking good overall as well. Uh, after the Friday dramas, it was a remarkably instant-free session as well. Megan was commentating on that one for me. I took over with 10 minutes to go as I was doing the Formula E, but I was still watching the session. Leclerc enjoying two tenths advantage over his teammate as well. The only things that did happen in the session was uh, a very close midfield pack uh, headed by Toro Rosso's Daniel K Danny Kvyat as well, who's just turned 25 yesterday, and his teammate Alexander Albon who almost, Alexander almost, almost came together with the uh, flying McLaren of Carlos Sainz at one point in the session as well, down at turn 15. Uh, they were split by the house of Kevin Magnussen. The Danes team uh, made Roman Grosjean by contrast could manage no better than 17th as his highest, uh, as, he, as his highest time struggled with tyres as well. Uh, the Baku specialist, the only driver on the current F1 grid to have multiple podiums in Baku, the only driver ever actually, is Sergio Perez, gave Racing Point a top 10 place in ninth, while Kimi Raikkonen completed the top 10 for Alfa Romeo. Giovinazzi, who has a 10 place grid penalty as well for, for apparently it changed, uh, all but matching the fin, he finished in 12th in that session as well. But Verstappen's Red Bull teammate, you ask? Pierre Gasly. Well, who knows? He, start, he will start the race from the pit lane tomorrow because, as we mentioned in briefing passing yesterday, in FP2, uh, he missed the way bridge and the team that made changes to the car. It's a slam dunk in the regulations. You have to start from the pit lane if that happens. So, unfortunately, 
He starts in the pit lane and doesn't get to have any of his times of qualifying. But uh, he did chose uh, he did choose to participate, but he was focused on race preparation work as well. George Russell recovering well in his rebuild car, necessary after hitting the drain cover in free practice one, to end just the hour four tenths behind teammate Robert Kubica. But the big question going into this one is who can catch Ferrari going into qualifying? Because anything can happen. Let's take a look at the times for free practice three. <laughs> So Charles Leclerc makes it a 1-2-3 in course all three practice sessions, a 141-604. Vettel second, a 141-802. Then Max Verstappen, a 142-852. Valtteri Bottas, a 143-064. Lewis Hamilton, a 143-176. Danny Kvyat with a 143-223. Kevin Magnussen, a 143-294. 143-3 for Alexander Albon, 143-430 for Perez, and Kimi Raikkonen in 10th on 143-537. Danny Ricciardo was 11th on 143-561, followed by Tony Giovinazzi in 12th on 143-367. Lando Norris is 13th on 143-924, followed by Carlos Sainz, 14th on 143-978. Lance Stroll, 15th on 144-039. A 144-043 for Nico Hülkenberg, 16th, 17th for Roman Grosjean, a 144-374, 146 dead for Robert Kibitzer in 18th place. George Russell's 19th, a 146-290, and Pierre Gasly 20th, a 147-836. But now we go on to the full qualifying report and the grid for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. So let's go on to the qualifying report straight away then and let's start with, as we always do, with qualifying one. Immediately though, we have to say two things. Car 10 disqualified for exceeding the fuel mass flow. That's Pierre Gasly. Already, even though he has to start from the pit lane, he's been excluded from qualifying. And just announced this morning before we shot this, Car 7, Kimi Raikkonen disqualified, front wing uh, conformity, and he has to start the race from the pit lane as well. So that means that Charles Leclerc crashed in quality 3, which we'll go into in a minute, and will start eighth or, uh, sorry, ninth on the grid. So let's get on to the qualifying and start from the back. So we know starting from the pit lane will be Raikkonen, Kubica and Gasly. So three cars in the pit lane, which means that George Russell will be car 17 on the grid and he will be lining up first. Now his teammate, Robert Kubica, had a dreadful qualifying. Coming into turn eight, he caught the inside curb, broke the front suspension and ploughed into the wall at the castle section. It's only seven and a half metres wide. So a very bad qualifying for him. Moving further but then George Russell starts 17th on the grid. He's Williams' best hope in today's race. Nico Hulkenberg. What happened in qualifying for him? Loads of traffic. Wrong time. Couldn't get the toe down the back straight. So he starts 16th on the grid. The same goes for Roman Grosjean. A bad qualifying for him. Same goes for Lance Stroll. He's 14th on the grid as well. Then we get Pierre Gasly. who's also disqualified. 13th on the grid. Kevin Magnussen as well. A tricky qualifying for him in the Rich Energy Hass F1 team. Uh, 12th, Alexander Albon, looking good in today's race, uh, if I'm honest. Uh, he's got a lot of free tyres available, and that that Honda engine is quick round here, surprisingly. We saw that in quality 1 and quality 2 with Verstappen top, and nearly pole position as well. Moving further out, Ricardo starts 11th in the Renault. He won this race from 10th on the grid. Could he do something today in the Renault? Highly unlikely, unfortunately, with their engine power issues, but unlikely things have happened. Let's get into the top 10 then, shoot out. Carlos Sainz wasn't involved, but does start 10th due to all the penalties. Charles Leclerc was a victim in qualifying too as well. Uh, when I left the commentary box and let Dad do the commentary for that one because I had to do Formula E in Paris, uh, he came in and did exactly the same, locked up and hit the wall at the castle section, same as Kibitz but the front suspension. If that happens today in the race, expect to see a red flag. Not only because the track will be blocked, because it takes 20 minutes to repair the barrier as well down there. So expect to see a red flag if anybody goes into the castle section as per usual. So I've got a feeling there could be a red flag today. I've just got this strange feeling. I don't know what it is. Uh, 
starting no, eighth on the grid, Antonio Giovinazzi's highest, but he has a 10 place grid penalty, so starts further down as well because he's got a new uh, internal combustion engine. So, uh, London, so actually, Charles Charles Leclerc should start further up on the grid, should start eighth, that's not bad. Landon Norris, though, is the only driver on the grid to keep his original grid position going forward. He starts seventh on the grid with a brilliant qualifying in the McLaren, sixth for Danny Kvyat in the Red Bull Toro Rosso Honda, fifth for Sergio Perez in the Racing Point, the highest qualifying of the season, fourth for Max Verstappen, third for Sebastian Vettel, and a front row lockout, second for Lewis Hamilton, and first for Valtteri Bottas. It seems that he's got his mojo back that he found in Australia. Let's take a look then at the full grid with all the amendments. So it's Valtteri Bottas on pole position with Lewis Hamilton alongside Sebastian Vettel third, Max Verstappen fourth, Sergio Perez fifth, Danny Kvyat sixth, and Lando Norris seventh. Starting now in eighth is Charles Leclerc after Kimi Raikkonen got disqualified. Ninth is Carlos Sainz and tenth Daniel Ricciardo. We won there like even two years ago. Then it's 11th for Alexander Albon, 12th for Kevin Magnussen, 13th for Lance Stroll, 14th for Romain Grosjean, 15th Nico Hülkenberg, 16th for George Russell, 17th for Tony Giovinazzi, and that's it because starting for the pit lane, Robert Kubica, Pierre Gasly, and Kimi Raikkonen. It's all crazy here in Baku, but it's great to be back in Baku. <laughs> Now, normal service was resumed in the commentary box on Sunday as well. I was back in the captain's chair. Megan was alongside. And in the commentary box as well was our father, Ian Birch, as well. So, let's take a look at what happened in a crazy, uneventful as well. You can have two words for it. Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Here's the race highlights for commentators Joshua Birch, Megan Birch and Ian Birch. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Race 4. Lap 1. Hamilton leads the title from Valtteri Bottas. Mercedes have had a 1-2 in all three races so far. Five on. Action in Azerbaijan. Good start from Vettel. Hamilton has the inside line down to turn one. The two Mercedes go side by side. And Bottas holds it out. Ricardo went to the inside. Hamilton has the inside. Good spot. Megan, there's a yellow one already. Hamilton has the outside line. The Force India going right round the outside as well. Great start from Perry. He's the only man who's on the podium three times and he's up already to fourth place. Hamilton pulls to the outside line, down towards turn number three, but Bottas has the advantage. Down, down. Does anyone make contact? No. Perez up into fourth and he's already ahead of Max Verstappen. Danny Ricciardo made a lunge on the inside. Declare has dropped from eighth to tenth. A bad start for him, but what a brilliant start from the two Mercedes. Nice, clean racing and that's what we like to see. Replay. Okay, so they just start, they just start, and Perez. Demon from like, Ricardo! Ricardo's just like, hi, and Perez is uh, just like, oh, hi. <laughs> I'm just gonna go side by side, and Lewis is just like, I'm gonna get you. Wait, wait, I should think about this. Lap 5. Look how close Verstappen is with the DRS and with the toe as well, but he just can't go for a move. Meanwhile, Leclerc can go for a move on land on a corner. Danny Kvyat gets through as well. There's bump drafts going on further back though. Sergio Perez, so Lance Stroll, sorry, getting ahead of Ricardo. Kvyat up there as well. The two toe also is now 11th and 12th as Stroll and Ricardo have made positions up. The two toe also go side by side. Albon up the inside of Kvyat into 11th place as well. They've all got the DRS. Here's Kevin Magnussen as well. Just for good measure. Look at the amount of brain dust is happening around this circuit. Lap 10. Leclerc should have his easiest pass of the afternoon here in Azerbaijan. Gets on the toe. Probably won't even need the DRS, to be honest with you. He has got it, though, in a few seconds' time. But he's got such a toe on Verstappen. The DRS is open. Verstappen can't defend. And Charles Leclerc moves up into fourth place. And to quote Megan, it's Mercedes, Mercedes, Ferrari, Ferrari at the moment in the order. Not bad at all. Lap 25. We want a safety car, but right now there isn't a safety car. And there's we're 25 laps down. We've still got all 20 runners in this Grand Prix. And now we've got Roman Grosjean, Danny McCann, Grosjean locks up, goes straight on. I just read on Twitter, can someone please deploy Roman Grosjean to bring a bit of spice into this race? And he's done so. He's, he's had a little spin for us. That was a bit of an excitement. So Grosjean's tyres are uh, going to be a bit destroyed there. Helkenberg throws it out the inside as well. Grosjean cuts him off. Uh, thank you, Roman. Your check is in the post for spicing up this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Lap 32. 
comes Hamilton. Here comes Bottas and Hamilton. This is it. This is where it's going to happen. Bottas has got the DRS. And he's got it as a yellow sector yellow. one. See, look, Megan, you're already in the box. It's on a dramatic side, mate. And Bottas passes the outside line. Has he got the run on the clear? He does. And Valtteri Bottas takes the lead at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And we've got two cars involved down at turn three. We've got the Tate Kvyat and it's Ricardo. And that's going to have to be a safety car at the very least. Kvyat gets it out, but what's happened to Ricardo? They'll back it out. So finally there's drama, and it's when Megan comes back in the box as well. Let's take a look. Ricardo throws out the inside, locks up, and just takes Kvyat off. So that is 100% Danny Ricardo's fault there. He, well, he was just... <laughs> Pulls the cost. Yeah, pulls the inside, locks up. And actually, Kvyat didn't hit the wall, which is very lucky. He just had to engage the reverse gear. So Kvyat was lucky with that one. Valtteri Bottas leads in Azerbaijan. He's taken the over from Charles Leclerc. The battle is on. But the yellow flag has gone, so no need for a safety car. Ricardo Whoa. hit him. Ricardo hit him. We didn't see that, did we? Ricardo reverse. We've got debris on the start finish straight. That, that's been Lap 39. Pierre Gasly's out of the race. Gasly's out of the race. His engine's gone. The Aston Martin Red Bull Racing Honda is puffing. And he's out. This is it. This is retirement for sure. The question is, where is he going to leave it? This could cause a safety car. Wow. And he's out. And he's pulling off down the escape road. Of course he is. He couldn't be He couldn't be a little bit friendly, could he? And help us out, our old mate Pierre. But Pierre Gasly's out of the race. It looks like an engine failure. It's a virtual safety car, is the call, which is really annoying because on our timing screen it just says safety car. So why it's, it then says VSC, I don't know, it should say virtual. But the virtual safety car is called drivers must decrease the speed by 40%, no overtaking. And the virtual safety car is called to clear away uh, Pierre Gasly's car to a safe distance, not at the end of the runoff. And that's dramatic and, and it's really heartbreaking for Pierre Gasly. Lap 51. Out of time 20. Mercedes are going to set a brand new record. They were first and second in Australia. They were first and second in Australia. They were first and second in Bahrain and China. They were first and second again in Baku. Valtteri Bottas wins in Azerbaijan. His second win of the year. It's now two apiece for Bottas and Hamilton. And it is four. Repeat. Four. One and two and finishes for Mercedes. A team that in pre-season testing was struggling. We were all amazed on the last day of testing that it was Ferrari who were fastest but oh no they were hiding something and they win all four of the races before we return to mainland Europe next race Spain so Valtteri Bottas wins again then for the Grand Prix of Azerbaijan now joining me yet again is Megan Birch to wrap up this podcast Megan you dipped now in the commentary but it was an interesting race Nothing really happened at all. One incident, one virtual safety car, no full safety car. That's unlike Baku a lot. Yeah, it's usually quite an exciting race the past couple of years. But before, I feel like it's starting to go back into what it used to be and be a boring race, kind of. 2016 was a dull one. 2017 was amazing. 2018 was the Red Bull accident. But it's time now for what has become sort of a regular here. It's the driver ratings. And uh, this week we've got Megan giving us the ratings. Uh, Of course, out of five. Five being amazing. One being terrible all weekend. And we'll start off with the results of the race. And in driver order. So Vati Bottas wins his second race of the year. And it's Mercedes' fourth 1-2 in a row, setting a new record since Williams did it back in 1992 with Mansell and Patrese. It's a fourth 1-2, but it's Valtteri Bottas who wins in Azerbaijan. Megan, your rating? Five. Lewis Hamilton finishes in second place, and now he's only one point behind in the championship. Again, that point in Australia for fast lap for Valtteri Bottas is separating them. Your driver rating? Four. Sebastian Vettel finishes on the podium yet again. Third place, your rating? Four. And Max Verstappen is fourth place in his Red Bull Honda. Interesting uh, strategy throughout the race, Megan. Like his place number, number four. 
And Charles Leclerc is in fifth place. Topped FP1, short as it was. Topped FP2, topped FP3, topped Quali 1, crashed in Quali 2. And had to start 15th on the grid, ended in fifth. Megan? Again like his place number five. Sergio Perez finished in sixth place, not back on the podium. He's the only repeat podium today here, remember, bar now Hamilton, of course. But uh, it's Perez in sixth place. Your rating? Four. Carlos Sainz finishes in seventh place, a strong result for the McLaren. Double points finish as well. Your rating? Three. And Fernando Norris in eighth place as well. Double points finish for McLaren, as I just said. Good, strong race for him around a circuit. He was stronger in Formula 2. Three. Lance Stroll finishes in ninth place again. He was on the podium here back in 2017. He knows this circuit. He likes this circuit. Your rating, ninth? Three. Kimi Raikkonen rounds out the top ten for Alfa Romeo Salba. Your rating? Three. I'm sensing a theme here, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Alexander Halbon finishes in eleventh place. And your driver rating for the Red Bull Toro Rosso Honda driver? What a surprise, number three. <laughs> it was that sort of a race, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all kind of dull. Yeah. Uh, Antonio Giovinazzi finishes in 12th place. Let me guess, Megan. Three. <laughs> Kevin Magnussen finishes 13th on the grid for, for uh, Haas, Rich Energy Haas F1. Not a great race for him today, but you're rating, Megan? Three. <laughs> yeah, it was sort of a boring race, wasn't it? 14th for Nico Hülkenberg in the Renault. Not very good luck for him overall, is it, this weekend? No. And it's four. Finally, a change. Uh, Robert, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Fifteenth place for George Russell. Your driver rating? Four. Which is surprising because he caused the crash in FP1, but that wasn't his fault with the train cover. It was hilarious. Did you see the bit where the crane hit the car down? Yeah, that was funny. And to, to round out, Robert Kibitza is the last finisher in sixteenth place. Megan, your rating? It's the return of a three. <laughs> 17th and out of the race from now on is Pierre Gasly in the Red Bull. Bad qualifying, bad race. F weekend to forget. How long is he before he's replaced at Red Bull? And of course, not by his own design. But Megan, your driver rating? Somehow, three. <laughs> Roman Grosjean in 18th place out of the race, but was going strong earlier on in the weekend. Your rating? Four. Danny Kvyat, the torpedo, got torpedoed himself this weekend in Azerbaijan. He's finished 19th and out of the race. Your rating? Three. And the man who torpedoed the torpedo, Danny Ricardo, the honey badger, finishing 20th and out of the race after he reversed into Danny Kvyat on lap 41. Megan, your driver rating for him? Two. Even though I still don't get how you reverse in those cars. It's very tricky, but it is possible. Right, that's it then from Azerbaijan for this podcast. We are back in two weeks' time at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for the first official European race of the year, the Spanish Grand Prix, a place that is warm in my heart after being there at pre-season testing. And it's going to be very weird as well, calling that race, knowing where everything is and knowing all the track guide. And it's also the first race we can use our B-roll footage, so expect a very different track guide when you join us for the weekend preview. Megan, what have I told you about that? You're going to have to pitch me and stop me talking about the pre-season test. Yes. Usually, you've told me that. Yes, I know. It's funny, isn't it? But uh, it is a beautiful city, Barcelona, and we will be back in Barcelona in two weeks' time for the Spanish Grand Prix. It was all here in Azerbaijan. Bye for now. <laughs>